Hello everyone. So, we have reached almost the last segment of our course the science of clothing comfort and in last class we have discussed that garment feet related aspects and we are discussing that the factors uh, related to the garment pressure different issues related to the garment pressure and the we have mentioned that garment should be designed to give optimum pressure more or less skin tight to accommodate body movement and for optimum pressure the fabric should have some characteristics these are it should have lower tensile modulus in multi direction mainly in warp and web direction it should be there higher effective elastic recovery so that it should not be permanent there should not be permanent deformation that there should not be any bagging effect it is required to actually so that the garment does not become loose and buckled on the body part and to accommodate body movement. So, these are the basic requirements of a particular fabric, so that the it gives proper pressure on our body and we get the comfort related to fit. So, there are few studies, so we will now discuss few studies related to garment pressure. The start first study where the different subjective wearing sensations were investigated because garment pressure it is uh, because uh, you, you may we may test by subjective sensation or objectively by incorporating some sensor pressure sensor. In this study, it, uh, the subjective sensations were studied. It is reported that when uh, the style of garment remains same, they have kept the style of garment same, the fitness of garment and the extensibility of the garment have great predictive power for subjective measurement of pressure. So, for same style the fitness if it is a tight fit garment it will give higher pressure. If the fabric extensibility is less then it will give higher pressure. The fitness of garment can be defined as the because earlier we have seen the tightness of garment can be expressed by F value. Here fitness of garment is uh, expressed in terms of the girth of garment and the girth of the naked body divided by the girth of the garment. Okay. With this, that expression one can express the fitness of the garment. So, the clothing pressure was assessed at four different areas in this study hip, sank, thigh and knee at four different places they have assessed the pressure and experts were asked to measure the take the sensation and also the sensor were used the sensor cell was actually it is smaller in size and uh, flexible in nature. So, flexible and smaller sensors were used that can measure the pressure of 10 to 0 to 10 kilo Pascal. Why is it uh, flexible? Otherwise, it will not conform to our body curvature and small it should be there. So, the garment comfort during wearing has a negative correlation with 
the filling of the restricted restricted movement that means the restricted movement filling if it is more that comfort will be less okay that has got negative correlation so fabric with higher comfort garment with higher comfort will not restrict the body movement will not be scratchy will not be heavy and will not have sensation of pressure okay so this scratchy heavy sensation and sensation of pressure if it is there or restricted movement is there then the garment will give discomfort sensation and the compressibility characteristics the softness characteristics and smoothness it is actually the correlation they found it's not that highly correlated okay in study 2 the garment pressure measured on waist for corset and waist band that waist it was measured and sensory test was conducted the sensation of pressure was conducted the what has been observed that garment pressure is influenced by area covered respiration and ability of garment to assume the body curvature that means the higher area cover will give the lesser pressure the respiration level is also there it changes and ability of garment to assume the body curvature means garment made of a stiff fabric or a fabric with higher shear rigidity will give higher pressure sensation. So, cover respiration and ability of movement of garment or ability of garment to assume our body curvature and garment pressure and comfort sensation is that it is earlier we have seen the garment discomfort sensation starts from 60 gram per square centimeter here at pressure less than 15 gram force per square centimeter there is no discomfort that uh, discomfort sensation was not there okay when the pressure was measured less than 15 gram force per square, square centimeter and discomforts the sensation increases from 15 to 25 it gradually increases but at pressure more than 25 gram force per square centimeter it gives high discomfort here what we are talking about there at the overall pressure overall it is not the specific area and this is these are the garments it is normal garment waist as the body curvature increases the garment pressure also increases that we have already it is a in study 3 another study what they have concluded that as the body curvature increases the garment also gives the pressure higher pressure the body curvature of average women's waist at the side is roughly 3.5 times greater than at the front greater than. So, that means at the side there will be higher pressure and what they have observed that three waist at the side gives 3.5 times higher pressure than the front and this the that is the curve it is a directly related to the curvature and which is actually proved by another study where they have used the Laplace equation. In the Laplace equation, the pressure exerted by the garment is equal to the uh, tension, uh, it is proportional to the tension of the garment or bandage uh, wrapping in it is a it is a basically uh, the compression bandage, the study was on compression bandage, the number of wrap as we increase the number of wrap 
the pressure exerted on the body part increases inversely proportional to the radius of curvature. That means, higher radius of curvature it is a basically that it will be it will give the lesser pressure that means, higher radius of curvature means less curvature so, that we have already seen and width of the bandage. So, higher width gives less higher the pressure the divided with in the denominator higher width gives uh, less pressure. Okay. Here also the, the same finding the, uh, the pressure increases with the increase in curvature of the limb. Now, we will see the pressure dynamic uh, compression behavior of compression athletic wear. Now, for a compression athletic wear that means, which is body fit tight garment, how this garment exert pressure on our body in dynamic condition. So, basically it depends on the elastic recovery characteristics of the fabric and dynamic interface of pressure. Now, this is the instrument which measures the dynamic characteristics of uh, pressure and we can wrap our bandage here and this leg mannequin leg can move at different speed okay. and as it stretch it is at as it bend the knee there will be a stretching and it will exert the garment will exert pressure here the bandage will exert pressure. In our case, we have used the compression athletic wire. Okay. Here, the dynamic compression behavior it shows these are the fabrics with the blue one is made of uh, these are all these are the knitted fabrics. In x axis, it is showing the time of test and y axis it is a percentage pressure drop. So, what is the percentage pressure drop here? Initially we have wrapped the uh, garment on the body pa part and initially the pressure has been measured at initial stage. Okay. Now, after activity the pressure will drop duty due to the creep or stress relaxation of the structure and that percentage drop is measured here and it is uh, it gives in the y axis. Now, what does it show with the increase in time elapsed the drop in pressure drop increases that means, the garment will actually impart lesser and lesser pressure. Now, here these are the knitted structure because athletic wire compression athletic wires are basically knitted in structure and that is for the to for ease of body movement and three different fabrics were made. The this first blue one it is it gives the it is made of 44 decitex filament the, the all three are made of uh, 44 decitex filament and the blue one is made of the uh, loop length of 5 the red one is 5.5 and the green one it's a 6 that is the lower lo this is a tighter structure relatively loose structure this is the loose structure uh, fabric and it shows that the tight structure fabric the pressure drop is less that means, it can retain pressure for longer time. So, to retain the pressure in the compression athletic wear because the pressure retention is the prime important factor here the study shows that we have to go for a fabric with a lower loop length. Similarly, in this study here the effect of elastin linear density. Here, what we have 
we have used the elastane fiber also elastane uh, here elastane linear density is 44 decitex and red one is 72 decitex coarse elastane has been used. So, if you have to maintain the pressure in the garment which is required. So, we should go for coarser elastane. So, coarser elastane will have less pressure drop. Another study was conducted where the different types of cross sectional shape the fiber the polyester fiber we have used polyester filament knitted fabric has been used and all the fabrics were made of the same struck same uh, loop length and the filament linear densities were same only thing is that their cross sections were different and the blue curve shows the uh, cross section with the circular cross section this is with a flat cross section the green one is tetra channel and the purple one is the hollow tetra channel what has been observed that the circular the fabric made of circular filament gives highest pressure drop that means it's a, it loses its pressure whereas the tetra channel fabric the fabric made of tetra channel filament gives the retains the pressure nicely so it is recommended that the for at a compression athletic wear one should go for the uh, tetra channel uh, uh, filament with higher elastane content higher uh, denier of elastane and lower loop length of knitted fabric to maintain the pressure so the in the conclusion the fiber and fabric constructional parameters have a significant effect on the elastic recovery and pressure drop with time. Tighter structure shows higher compression pressure with lower rate of pressure drop and good elastic recovery. Fabric knitted with coarse elastane shows less, but more consistent pressure over time and higher elastic recovery modified polyester cross sectional shape shows better compression efficiency with which with reduced pressure drop and improved recovery characteristics. So, now we will discuss how to evaluate tactile perception to fit. So, we have discussed earlier when we are disc we discussed the uh, neurophysiological or tactile sensation. So, that uh, they, uh, and um, there we have discussed in detail here we will only focus on the feet related tactile sensation. So, in ASTM E 8 in with that test method it was adapted to measure the tactile perception to feet that particular test method constant stimulus difference is there that we have already discussed and uh, uh, two types of thresholds were there one is different threshold another is the recognition threshold which is actually positive identification of difference and difference threshold which we have already discussed that it produce not noticeable difference. Okay. So, uh, there are uh, three parts are there in first part the control garment and test garment that is pant were assessed by the experts the scales were given the rating scales the it is a uh, loose loser actually and a little loser the same little tighter and tighter. So, the pants were given to the experts they have been asked to rate with this rating scale. In the second part expert so were asked to concentrate on specific area not overall earlier it was overall area now they have been asked to uh, concentrate on specific area different experts were asked the second test was therefore performed with variation at a single location okay at single location two experts were asked 
to respond to a test sample with the heap and crotch variation. Okay. So, heap at heap what is the difference in uh, pressure they have been asked and in final part the final perception of test was carried out to determine the significance of the threshold perceived in relation with the comfort or discomfort perception of the carbon fluid. So, that whatever threshold they have perceived and finally, they have been asked whether the garment is comfortable as far as the pressure is tactile perception is concerned. So, in another study the tight fitting pants were assessed for Pressure, pressure perceptions by experts. Okay. So, here uh, psychophysical scaling techniques were used and sensations were actually different sensations what is the pressure sensation from 0 to 10, 10 means maximum high pressure okay, which is very highly discomfort maximum degree of pressure and 0 sensation means a naked there is no cloth, cloth pressure is not there. So, every subject was asked to assess the pressure sensation of each area while wearing the garment. Okay. They have been asked, so, so they and then they have rated. Now, there are different factors related to the garment fit. These factors are first factor is the air gap thickness. If the fabric is loose, its a fit is loose then air gap thickness will be uh, high. So, for smaller air gap now we will discuss uh, different aspects okay. the sm for smaller air gap that is medium fit garment the thermal insulation and moisture vapor resistance increases with the increase in air gap. For more air gap loose fit garment the thermal insulation and moisture vapor resistance decreases with the increase in air gap. So, if we are talking about the medium fit garment to loose fit garment that means, the it if it increases that uh, it uh, the looseness is increases then it will increase the thermal resistance, but if the we are talking about the loose fit garment then the actually phenomena will be totally different. Okay. The atmospheric air in that case will penetrate through the opening and interfere with the steel air. Tight or medium fitted garments are preferable to keep the body warmer in windy condition. So, in windy condition the loose fit garment is not actually recommended if we want to keep our body warm and in absence of wind maximum thermal insulation was reached with air gap thickness of 1 centimeter. So, that is actually in absence of wind it has been observed that if the air gap thickness is, is actually 1 centimeter which is equivalent to the girth basically difference in girth between the body and garment of 7.5 centimeter that if we take the actual length it will be 7.5 centimeter, but effective thickness is 1 centimeter it is a maximum insulation one can achieve if there is no wind. But in case of windy condition if in windy condition that will be reduced we have to reduce the thickness that means, from loose fit garment to we have to have little bit medium fit garment that it is a typically 0.6 centimeter. Thing. So, we have to reduce the total length of the garment by 2 centimeter from 7 centimeter 7.5 centimeter to approximately 5 centimeter. So, 2.5 centimeter reduction in the size should be there in case of wind uh, windy condition. More natural and forced convection is believed to cause the slower increase, increase of thermal insulation. Okay. So, tight medium fit garments are preferable to keep the body warm in windy condition. So, that is the actually findings of this uh, study and then 
another issue is related to the garment fit is the garment ventilation. So, effect of ventilation of jacket on comfort was investigated. Normal fit to oversized jacket were prepared using metal rings okay, which increases the air volume up to 60 percent. So, different metal rings were created, 9 male subjects were participated, volume of air is measured by 3 D scanner method. So, volume, volume of air has been measured and ventilation rate was measured during the standing, walking, swinging arm and bending arm. So, both ventilation rate and the volume of air was measured, higher ventilation is observed for loose fit garment. Okay. So, more uh, loose fit garment is more heat loss. So, that uh, in this ventilation was measured where volume of air is uh, measured by 3 D scanner method. So, effect of ventilation on tolerance time of chemically protective garment when walking on the treadmill was investigated. So, the protective garment which is actually it is heavy in nature which is actually which is um, uh, coated. So, in that case the moisture vapor transmission through clothing will be less. So, it, was, it has to depend on only the ventilation. So, in that case it has been observed that the tolerance time has increased from 174 plus minus 42 minute to 203 plus minus 56 minute by increasing the ventilation through the material from 180 to 365 liter per square meter. So, if we can increase the ventilation amount, amount of fluid amount of air ventilated, then tolerance time can be increased. Now, we will discuss the condition of fluctuating moisture, fluctuating relative humidity of microclimate. Because of ventilation constant movement, the microclimate gets uh, the uh, continuous change in the atmospheric humidity, atmospheric the total continuous change in the supply of fresh air. So, microclimate gets and the condition gets fluctuated. Okay. So, the fluctuating microclimate occurs, the fluctuation occurs very frequently due to activity and body movement. So, effect of relative humidity of microclimate on surface temperature of cotton and polyester garment was studied. So, there are two conditions were studied one is the rapid fluctuation of microclimate that means, a person is walk running with a or walking higher speed or a very quick body movement in that case the there will be rapid fluctuation of relative humidity of microclimate and it has been measured two types of garment was uh, tested one is the cotton garment in cotton garment actually it fluctuates significantly due to rapid humidification and dehumidification in case of polyester garment fluctuation was smaller so we can see that this is the fluctuation of relative humidity of the of uh, the microclimate this is the rapid fluctuation due to the body movement okay and tip and here it's a it shows the surface temperature of the garment so if the rapid change in microclimate occurs the cotton quickly humidify and dehumidify so due to that it surface temperature fluctuates but in case of polyester it's not happening because polyester doesn't absorb that quickly okay absorb moisture that's why it's a it it's a surface temperature remains constant in case of rapid fluctuation but 
So, surface temperature of cotton garment fluctuates significantly due to rapid humidification and dehumidification of microclimate. But in case of slow fluctuation, slow rate of fluctuation, the increase of surface temperature with the increase of relative humidity was observed for both cotton and polyester. This has been the observation increase of surface temperature for cotton fabric was higher than polyester due to hygroscopicity of fiber. So, this is that there is a slight change in temperature of polyester, but in case of polyester um, cotton it is high and this is the gradual increase in microclimate. That means, a per, suppose we can imagine a situation a person is uh, sitting it is not he is not moving, but air is blowing through the and gives the ventilation in the, this type of situation this may happen. Now, we have reached to the extreme last uh, end uh, of this last um, segment of this course and now we will see the um, and how to measure the overall garment fit. Overall garment fit can be measured by measuring the garment by pattern uh, measurement and the latest technique is the that by anthropometry uh, technique tradition it is measured by traditionally it is uh, traditionally measured by the uh, measuring tape uh, which needs expertise uh, which is time consuming uh, chance of chances of human errors are there and one has to touch the body it may be inaccurate. So, latest technique is that 3 D body scanning technique and uh, with the 3 D body scanning technique here a 3 D laser scanning is is a process using used to build a digital 3 D copy of the uh, body uh, physically digitally it will uh, create a body structure without touching the body. So, you by the use of the laser scanning technique. So, at present this technique is used for different purposes the apparel designing like protective wear uh, wearable technology okay, uh, thermal comfort in this apparel uh, design it is used in ergonomic study it is used and also for reverse engineering it is used okay, uh, for rapid prototype and so this type of places it is and even for biomedical application the, this 3 D body scanning technique is used and it is uh, in uh, apparel uh, designing now it has been it is uh, used widely. The technique is that here the system consists of two primary components one is that uh, that hardware component which consists of CCD camera and a laser source and a computer okay. and second one is that image recognition software. So, this two system is there. Now, the hardware consists of also that a set up the a vertical column is there with four corners and each of the corners will it consists of scanning assembly that means, a scanning assembly consists of two CCD cameras and one laser source that is the configuration and at four different corners this total scanning system will be uh, placed the setup connected with the elevator assembly that means, they will move from top to bottom or from bottom to top for scanning. Okay. Now, this is the system the subject the person is uh, standing at the center there are four vertical columns each vertical column is consist of one scanning assembly this is the scanning assembly enlarged version of this scanning assembly it consists of two CCD camera one laser source and this at four different portion the four different this scanning assembly will be there and 
it will either move from top to bottom or from bottom to top synchronously. This will be synchronized and the laser source will actually show the body contour and CCD camera will capture this uh, the contour and ultimately it will get transmitted to the software, software will create the total body contour. This is the system after calibration elevator moves downward and swipe the scanning zone with the horizontal plane of laser light. Laser light will move horizontal plane and then it will create complete contour. It illuminates the contour of the human body, the discrete points are recorded by the CCD camera in a horizontal point total process takes few seconds it moves and the, the data transferred to the computer which creates a point cloud uh, represent cloud representation of the body contour. So, ultimately we are able to create a complete body contour which actually helps in designing a cloth designing a total uh, garment, a total uh, garment fit depending on our requirement okay. and that is the end of this course and here we have discussed uh, all the aspects of clothing comfort. Hope this total uh, course will help in designing a comfortable clothing and we should be actual overall comfortable and thank you goodbye.